Hello everyone, welcome to Best of Us Investors. We as a tribe are gathering in Discord server where we share Carrie's portfolio, Carrie's buy and sells in real time, and we have live discussions right after the market closes on Fridays. And of course, we share insights on stocks before the videos are released. The stock analysis team also analyzes stocks based on the votes from the tribe members. So hope to see you all in the Discord where the link is listed in the description to join. We would also appreciate if you can subscribe and hit the like button, which will help our stock analysis videos. Now let's get started with our stock for this week. Today we'll be talking about Vuzix Corporation. The ticker symbol is V-U-Z-I. So Vuzix is a supplier for wearable display technology that designs, manufactures, markets, and sells augmented reality, so AR, wearable devices in the Northern America, Asia, Europe, and internationally. So before we get into Vuzix, if we look back into the history, we could see that there has always been a period where there was a paradigm shift. For example, in the 1990s, we had the internet and laptop evolution. Then in the 2010s, after the iPhone was launched, there was obviously a major shift to the smartphone. And now mostly everything is possible on these phones. Even for myself, if I lose my iPhone, I'll go crazy since I now do all my important tasks through my phone. Now on our next paradigm shift, it is thought that now we will have everything displayed in front of our eyes anytime we need them. So there's no longer a need for smartphones or laptops and will be replaced with wearable devices such as smart glasses with AR technology displaying screens in front of me wherever I go. So smartphones will be the device from the past, such as physical maps are no longer being used and replaced by maps on our smartphones. So again, instead of smartphones, it will all be smart wearable devices. And Vuzix is one of the major companies leading the smart glasses industry. So Vuzix provides the M300 XL, M400, and M4000 series of smart glasses for enterprises, industrial, commercial, and medical markets, where here are some real-world applications explained by Vuzix. Vuzix has led the augmented reality industry with groundbreaking product development and real-world applications. Whether it's in the operating room at a hospital, in the warehouse, or on a construction site. The recent wave of travel restrictions has driven strong adoption of their technology worldwide. And it keeps growing as more companies realize that implementing Vuzix smart glasses into their business model is not only a The healthcare industry now has tools at their disposal to eliminate mistakes, increase the number of successful operations, and tend to larger number of patients, all while reducing exposure to harmful illnesses and conserving personal protection equipment, name of the game in tech developments and AR. Vuzix has just begun to scratch the surface of their application potential. And the full extent of where their products may be used has yet to be determined. As you just saw in the clip, there are so many real use cases that are making the tasks much more convenient, efficient, and saving a ton of time. And I don't see anyone going back to where they were once they start using the application of the smart glasses. Now, Vuzix is also preparing for the next generation glasses, which is also a game changer in my opinion. So let's see what they have in plan. Introducing Vuzix, next generation smart glasses technology. A sleek exterior leads to a tech-rich interior, delivering style and substance with a trendy, comfortable design, combining easy wearability with even greater utility for an enhanced connected mobile experience with fully wireless connectivity. They're made even more dynamic with the added dimension of their ultra-slim, single-layer, see-through binocular waveguides. Powered by a pair of tiny, highly efficient micro-LED projectors, they generate crisp video into the advanced waveguide optics that are viewable indoors and out for heads-up contextual information. Both monochrome and full-color RGB HD Plus solutions are in development. And at one micron in size, the micro-LEDs have one of the highest density pixel arrays available. From sight, we move to sound with multiple noise-canceling microphones for flawless phone calls and voice UI integration. Forget your uncomfortable earbuds. With acoustic chambers fully integrated into the frames, 
we deliver clear stereo targeted over the ears for privacy without losing ambient sound around the wearer. Enhancing hands-free operation, the onboard processor wirelessly communicates with your phone. Use your voice or tap on the touch-sensitive arm to activate the displays, allowing discreet connectivity to the world. And with longer-lasting battery life, the glasses are ready when you are. Style and substance never looked this smart. Vuzix partnerships are also expanding with great companies, and they have more than 40 companies of the Fortune 100 using their product and services. So they have partnered with Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Skype, and numerous companies, as you can see on this slide. Another major application is in the healthcare medical space, where they have a rapid list of growing customers, including a number of universities such as Johns Hopkins, using the smart glasses for training and conducting remote virtual patient rounds in response to COVID-19. University of Rochester using these smart glasses for surgeons. Louisville medical students are now virtually shadowing doctors post-pandemic with music smart glasses. And University of Malaya neurosurgeons using Abusic's M400 smart glasses and research of blood cells are also being conducted utilizing these smart glasses at Newcastle University. These are just a number of partnerships that I mentioned, but Vuzix have much more partnerships going on, as you can see on the slide, along with a number of applications for surgeries as well. Another sector with enormous potential for using smart glasses is the military. With a display in front of your eyes, you'll be able to visualize locations of the enemy, display the exact calculation for a target when launching missiles from ships, tanks, and aircrafts, and even for snipers. Smart glasses will also allow soldiers to be able to see through smoke in around the corner and can also have maps displayed real time while they run around. And Vuzik has had a partnership with the Navy and there are some rumors suggesting the possibilities that Vuzik smart glasses may be used in the army for a majority of soldiers. However, as far as I know, nothing has been confirmed and is only a rumor. So please do your own research on any partnership regarding the military. One interesting news that caught my eyes is that Microsoft has won a U.S. Army contract for AR headsets with their HoloLens products worth up to $21.9 billion over 10 years. Now, this is a huge partnership where this one contract is worth $21.9 billion, but if you look at Vuzix's total market cap, it's only around $700 million as we are recording this video. So if you think about the numbers, I think there is an enormous potential for Vuzix to grow in the upcoming future. The total addressable market for augmented reality, AR, was around $17.67 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach $26.75 billion by the end of 2021, where by the end of 2028, it's projected to reach $340 billion. So this is definitely a sector with exponential growth, in my opinion, and Vuzix is one of the leaders in the AR smart glasses industry. So all in all, I do think smart glasses, or a way of displaying a screen, through wearable devices will be the future and am convinced that laptops and smartphones may not exist anymore in 10 years. However, I would like to see how Vuzix competes with the giant tech companies such as Apple, Microsoft, and Google as it moves forward in the future. So today we're going to look at the financials of Vuzix Corporation. Uh, Drew just went over basically the Overview of the company and what they do, future is. I like to look under the hood and see if there's enough gas in the car to, to make it get to the, to the end line. So today we're going to start with the balance sheet, see how much cash they have. This is a small company. I think it did $11.8 million last year. So let's take a look at the balance sheet. They have some cash and cash equivalents. They have $137.6 million of cash and cash equivalents compared to $36 million a year ago. Uh, that mostly came, as we'll see later, from uh, stock options and stock opportunities, warrants, and things like that, not from operations. Current assets, $151 million compared to current liabilities, uh, $3.1 million. So they have enough money to short-term uh, obligations, so that's always a good thing. Let's move on to the consolidated statement of operations. So we can see on this chart, we have 
the three months end of June 30th and the six months end of June 30th. In total sales, uh, as you can see in the three months ending, uh, we're down 2.9 million compared to 3.03 million at the same time in 2020. And it's basically because the sales of engineering services has decreased. And according to the company, that's where their highest margin of sales comes from. So the sales went down, although over six months, the sales have gone up. When you go down to the total cost of sales, you can see that the total cost of sales has also gone up compared to 2020 in the three months ending June 30th. Gross profit, $579,000 compared to $795,000, so 20% down from 2020. When you look at uh, operating expenses, you can see <clears throat> that R&D is up from 2.7 million from 1.7 million, so about a million dollars up. Uh, marketing's up also 796,000 to 1.3 million. General administrative expenses are up 1.7 million to 4.7 million, it's quite high. And uh, appreciation amortization. So you go down total operating uh, expenses uh -huh. have increased to 9.3 million over 5 million. Now if you dig into the, the financials a little bit, you can see where that expense comes from. Total operating costs for the three months ending June 30th, 2021, increased by 4.3 million over the same period in 2020, of which approximately 3 million of the increase was due to non-cash stock-based compensation and mainly primarily related to the company's new performance-based LTIP introduced this year. So again, the money's going to the directors, uh, owners, employees before it goes to you. So this is a big problem for me in the long term until this is all pushed out, uh, you're going to be diluted in this company, I would imagine, going forward. You can see that the loss from operations is $8.7 million for three months compared to $4.2 million. Get down to the net loss, $8.7 million, $4.2 million for 14 cents earnings per share loss compared to 13 cents. And you can see that uh, the number of outstanding shares went from $36 million to $63 million. Uh, so you're being diluted uh, every year. So I, I would imagine after we look at cash flow, that we're gonna need some more money infused in here, which means more shares offered. Let's go over the cash flow statement now. And if you go down, you can see that the non-cash flow from operating activities is negative 15 million, 15.4 million. So they're not getting anything from operations. The big line you can see, you go down a couple of spaces, stock-based compensation was 941,000 in 2020, and now it's 5.6 million which is about a third of their loss. So they add that back in because they call that non-cash, but it's still sitting there. If you get down to the cash flow from operation, you can see it's negative 13.1 million. So cash flow from operations is not sustaining uh, the operations itself. So where do they get their money from? Do they get it from investing activities? Well, let's go down and see what's going on in investing. You can see purchase to fix assets, $719,000, investments in patents and trademarks, $214,000 they spent. And in licensings and other assets, 300,000 they spent for a total of $1.2 million that they spent. So they're not getting anything uh, basically from investing activities and in a normal company uh, that has profits, investing is good. You're investing back into your company. You either invest back into your company, you give your money back to your shareholders via a dividend, or you repurchase your shares. And that's how you increase the value of your company. None of that's happening here. So where are they getting their money? Well, they're getting it from financing activities. You can go down proceeds from warrants, $34 million. Exercise of stock options, $673,000. And then the stock offering itself is $91 million. So you can go down cash from financing was $115.8 million. And that's where the money's coming from. So unless they get their operations up and going, they're probably going to burn through that cash and I'm going to need to go out and do another offering. So if you go to my financial summary, how I rate this, the revenue is growing. So that's a plus. Unfortunately, the operating income is not, and that's a negative for me. The net is negative, but it's growing. So I, I gave that an equal. Per share earnings are negative. Shares outstanding are growing. So that's negative for me. Current assets over liabilities is, is good. Uh, so short term, they're, they're able to, to fund their operation. Stock-based compensation is a negative, of course. It's increasing, which dilutes uh, your regular shareholder uh, value every time they do this. Liquidity, cash is from financing activities and not operating activities. I would give that a negative. So from my point of view, I would not invest in this company. It's, it's going up against the uh, Facebooks, Apples, Microsofts of the world. I think they have a lot more money. Uh, they're burning through cash. So can they get profitable before they burn through cash? I 
I don't see it. Uh, others may see it differently. Uh, the stock-based compensation issue is going to take a while to burn out you know, $5.4 million of a company that makes $11.8 million a year in sales. I think, uh, I don't know how their manufacturing goes, but we're in a different world when you, when you invest. You need to take into consideration what's going on in the world with the supply chain. So I don't know if they manufacture their own products to, to, to make these glasses work or if they import them or buy them from someone else. But it looks like to me, just based on their uh, financials, that they have a, a lot of expense going out to paying off vendors. So I would imagine that this company spends a lot of money uh, buying these products from other vendors. So how will the supply chain uh, affect their ability? Uh, to produce and to be profitable. And you just saw where Amazon <clears throat> and Apple came out and they missed their expectations on the quarter. Their stocks took a little bit of a hit. It came back. You know, that's because they have <clears throat> enough money to take these kind of hits. <clears throat> a little company like Muselex Corporation, I don't know if it could take a hit like that. So just be mindful of that. The other thing I'd look at is if you want to get into it and take a chance on this company, the technicals right now are basically the RSI is at 50, uh, which means it's right in the middle from oversold and overbought. The MACD is pretty much flat in the negatives. It's above right now. The current price as of this film is $10.69. It was down 3.59% on Friday. The SMA 9, 10.49. So it's above the 9. It's above the 20. It's way below the 200 SMA at, at 16.26. So it, it would be a risk to get in. But if you want to, be careful. This is a volatile stock and they don't have much money and it's a small stock. So you're really taking a gamble on this one, in my opinion. Something that I probably wouldn't buy. But I don't discourage you if you believe in the technology and you believe in the company. Uh, just be careful and dollar cost average your way in. But I think over the long term, it's going to take a while for you to, to get your money back out of this, out of this stock.